tonight we have Evan Murphy of the band Mile 12, and they're going to be performing next Wednesday night, November 15th, at the Trinity Sanctuary Concert Series, along with the local band City Hotel at the Trinity United Methodist Church on Telfair Square. Welcome, Evan Murphy. Thanks so much for having me. So, you guys just got back from a trip to New Zealand and Australia. We did. We just got back yesterday. Bibi, who's from New Zealand, she's been kind of trying to convince us all to fly over. And there's this guy named George Jackson who is, uh, you know, he books tours over there sometimes for American bands. So we decided, yeah, why not? Let's go and see Bibi's homeland and then go over to Australia. So we were over there for about a month. Tell us a little bit about uh, your band members. Sure. Um, our bass player is named Nate Sabat, and he's from the Upper West Side of New York City. Nate is kind of a jack of all trades in the band. He's an amazing songwriter and harmonizer. In fact, he sometimes if other people in the band can't hear a harmony part, myself included, he can always hear something and teach it to you. He's got a great sense of just songwriting and 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 you know arrangements and uh he's quite a quite a good soloist on the bass as well so he's he's great he's just like kind of a foundation you know to have in the band um he's sings lead on some of the songs that he wrote and i I love singing harmonies with him and then we have our uh two two women in the band who uh, it was originally the four of us together, me, Nate, and, and Bronwyn and Bibi. So Bronwyn is our fiddle player, and she grew up learning Irish music on the fiddle and then became sort of obsessed with uh, bluegrass when she got into her teenage years and actually went early to the Berkeley College of Music in Boston and just sort of dove headfirst into bluegrass and started studying it with some amazing people. And her and Nate, the bass player, were at Berkeley at the same time as each other, sort of getting interested in bluegrass at the same time and got to know each other. And then uh, Bibi, who I mentioned, is who's from New Zealand, um, a lot of people ask her how the heck she even found out about bluegrass music and banjo playing, uh, being from this kind of small town in New Zealand. And it just so happened that a guy who lived nearby her and her family played the banjo and she wanted to learn it. And he told her that it might be, you know, pretty hard to learn the banjo, which made her want to learn it even more. And the way that she describes it is once you get obsessed with the banjo, you kind of have to find your way to bluegrass because that's the genre of music it's associated with most. So she studied jazz on the banjo, and she went to music school. She realized at some point that it was just inevitable that she'd have to move over to the United States if she really wanted to seriously pursue a full-time career in bluegrass music. So that's the four of us all met up in Boston. And she chose Boston just because it does have this thriving bluegrass scene because of places like the Berklee College of Music. And I didn't choose Boston because I was born here. I just, you know, grew up in Boston. So the four of us all ended up in Boston at the same time and formed this group, not knowing exactly what was going to happen. And then for a long, long time, we thought about having a mandolin player, wanted a mandolin player, but we just couldn't find someone who was the perfect fit, you know, just kind of around the same age as the rest of us and same interests and same desire to do music full time and who would even want to join our band, you know, if we asked them. But finally we mustered up the courage to ask David Benedict, who was just kind of establishing himself so much as this, you know, kind of mandolin maestro. He was doing these video this video series called Mandolin Mondays where every week he'd record himself playing a new impressive piece of mandolin music and uh he was playing with missy rains and we asked him if he would be interested in moving to boston and joining our band and he was uh 
surprised when we first asked him and had to think about it because it was a big decision, but he decided to leave Nashville and move to Boston and join up with us. And that's, to me, where the band really synced up and became, you know, a full-time kind of professional thing was when he joined and we became a quintet. So that's, yeah, that's kind of the bios, I guess. (laughs) And you're also an award-winning band because (laughs) you received the 2017 Band Momentum Award from the International Bluegrass Music Association. Yes, we were uh, genuinely shocked by that there were other really really good groups in the running and we were i remember us all driving to ibma together and listening to some of the other bands and just shaking our heads and thinking like there's no way we're gonna win win this thing and uh which made it you know surprising and exciting um we had we had been nominated the year before um in 2016 and did not win it that year which uh, we we were not surprised by that but but, uh but then in 2017 when we won it we all just yeah i mean it was um you know it's just a, a validation from the bluegrass community and ibma has been so supportive and so helpful really since we first formed they've the first world of bluegrass week that we went to people were just, you know, coming out to see our showcases and (laughs) we probably didn't sound very good uh, because we had only been together for a little while and just had a bunch of songs we had just worked up. And, you know, I think people probably could tell that we weren't fully, you know, formed yet as a group and we're just starting out, but they were really encouraging and maybe saw some potential and told us to, you know, keep at it and keep working hard. And so then, you know, a couple of years later to get that award, which is really an award given to a band that is working hard and, you know, trying to get out there full time. Uh, it was very validating and made us feel like we're on the right track, you know? And in addition to that, uh, both of the ladies, uh, Bronwyn and Bibi have received Fresh Grass Instrumental Awards. Yeah, that was great. That was that was early on in the band's life, and we went to the Fresh Grass Festival, which is this great festival in Massachusetts, and it's held at the Museum of Contemporary Art there, and such a cool festival. And yeah, they both there's a, a fiddle contest and a banjo contest and each of them won first place in their contests, which is an indication of how how talented they are on their instruments. Yeah, it's really interesting because I, I had mentioned to someone that uh your band was coming to town and uh because I'd seen you all uh, well, I've seen you all in a couple formats. I've seen you all as individuals <laughs> Uh, well, most of y'all, I've seen most of y'all as individuals mm-hmm. here at the Acoustic Music Seminar Series as part of the Savannah Music Festival. And then right. I s- saw the whole band uh, up at uh, the Roasting Room in Beaufort um, yeah. quite recently. And so I was describing and saying, you know, you have to go out to see them. And th- they gave me this quizzical look when I said that they're a bluegrass band from Boston, Massachusetts. Like, right. Boston, Massachusetts, bluegrass. And uh, most people don't realize how active the Americana slash bluegrass scene is up in Massachusetts and all of New England. Absolutely. It's it's kind of a hotbed for it. I mean, you think of the bands that have come out of this area, like Crooked Still or Della May or the Lonely Heartstring. Um, There's been a lot of, of bands coming out of this scene, you know. Let's talk a little bit about your new album. Sure. And that just dropped, like, what, three weeks ago? It officially dropped uh, even more recently than that, Ah. on October 27th. And the album was completed before that, but that was the official release date where it became became public. And we we happened to be in Australia when it was officially released, which is kind of funny. Um 
but uh, yeah, so it's it's very new, um, and it's the only full length album that the band has. The four of us, like I said before, we had David join the band on mandolin. The four of us made an EP, which just was six tracks on it when we really had first formed as a group. So that was feeling a little bit outdated, and we've been excited to get this full-length album out there. So, uh, yeah, this is the first one. And, and it's really a marvelous album with a very wonderful combination of tunes on it. Um, wh- well, thank you. What, what would you say is your favorite tune? I have a couple of them stand out to me for different reasons. Uh, so the first track of the album is Onwards, which is the, the title of the album as well. And that song, to me, combines the, the different elements of the band better than maybe any other single song we play. I mean, it has vocal harmonies, it's got blazing, fast solos on it. It's kind of bluegrass sounding, but then it has these tricky time changes in it, like meter changes, which gives it the progressive sound. So that's that's one of my favorite ones because it I think it represents us so well. You know, if we if we could only play one song for people, at least at this stage that would probably be the one that we'd play for people because it would kind of show who we are. So that song says Mile 12. I, I would say that that song says Mile 12 probably better than any other one song does. Imagine me on a long, lonesome highway Moving fast like the wind through the trees Call me up, dear, and tell me you love me Make it feel like you're right here with me Do you think of me walking beside you? Do you see me when strangers pass by? Tell me true, do you miss me each morning? Do you wish I could hold you tonight? Traveling onwards Handwritten letters are right. Do you sense any lack of devotion from pen and page or from talking at night? Many hours of sleep I've lost here, turning over and over in bed. Seeing ghosts of our days spent together with your voice running loose in my head. Traveling onwards through the night. I'll see you again, dear, and you'll want me beside you, I pray. There's still mountains and highways to travel, but till then, every night, dear, I'll say, I'll be coming home, but there's still a while to go. I'll be coming home, but there's still a while to go.
And you said you had another favorite? The other one <clears throat> that is um, really uh, powerful to me, I guess, or important to me, is the Margaret Keene, which is probably the song that, of all the songs we played, most people will come up to us after a show and say, you guys are, are going to put that on the album, right? you got to put that one on the album. Um, I think that I like that song for a couple reasons. It really was co-written by everyone in the group. Um, you know, it everyone kind of had their hands in the, the writing process of that. It took us a long time to write it and to arrange it. And it's this heartbreaking story of... Um, you know, a young man and woman who are in love with each other, but they feel dissatisfied with their lives being stuck in this dirty city that they can't seem to escape from. And, you know, they go out on the ocean and decide they're going to have this adventure together out on the water and and work on a fishing boat and see if they like it out there. And one of them really feels at home out on the fishing boat, and the other one uh, can't can't take it and can't do it. And they end up separating at the end of the song. And, you know, it's got this kind of Celtic sea shanty sound to it, but also this kind of modern bluegrass sound to it. And I don't know, it it always, like, every time I sing it with the band, I think, like, wow, that's really sad. And uh, I, I just like that song for all those reasons. <laughs> Every day we walk the harbor, she'd look out on the sea And as the boats would come and go, she'd turn and say to me Oh, let's go out on the water, the city I have seen The streets are loud and dirty, but the ocean's clear and clean Oh, the price we pay for living in a city by the sea Just to know we could escape if we were brave enough to leave a boat could take us anywhere we'd ever want to go When that coastline disappears, the boat's the only home we'll know There's a job out on the water for the Margaret Keene Three months of barely any pay for a world we've never seen Oh, we'll work to see all summer Come fall, return to land I'll marry her the day we dock and never part again We stepped aboard that fishing boat one rainy morning in June We met the captain, met the crew and set to leave at noon Oh, we sailed out from the harbor with skies so dark and gray but far from shore the sun did soar and smiling she did say Oh the price we pay for living in the city by the sea Just to know we could escape if we were brave enough to leave A boat could take us anywhere we'd ever want to go When that coastline disappears the boat's the only home we know Chance with 20 lines in tow Oh, the captain worked us harder Than we'd ever worked before But each night as she was sleeping I was thinking of the shore One night as we lay sleeping storm had found our course The key took water for the sides The waves they came in force We awoke and tied our lifelines I prayed the seas would tame I'd never seen her smile so wide As in the wind and rain
And in my coat I had a ring to put upon her hand Oh, but when I turned and saw her staring back at me I knew she'd never come to shore nor I return to sea Oh, the price we pay for living in a city by the sea Just to know we could escape if we were brave enough to leave A boat could take us anywhere we'd ever want to go You have to have either a breakup or a murder or something involved in yeah, the dress song. Yeah, absolutely. I don't know if we have any murders on the album, at least that I can remember now, but yeah, maybe maybe on the next one. <laughs> yeah, well, you've got to get a murder ballad in there someplace. Yeah, yeah. Well, actually, you didn't mention my favorite. <laughs> or what's your And my favorite is Call My Soul. Oh, well, that's, that's one that I wrote about uh, I don't know, mortality, I guess, or, or, yeah. What, what, what is it about that song that you, that you liked? Well, I think it's just that. I think it gets yeah. to the sense of why we're here and what we need to do and, and how close mortality might be. Yeah. And I, I was talking to a friend of mine who I gave the album to and they had listened to it and they said that the, theme of the album seemed to be sort of traveling and then returning. And I think so many of the songs do have that. Uh, and, you know, that song is about traveling and then returning inevitably back to, you know, uh, your own, the, the end of your own life. And I was, I had written it right after my grandfather died and he grew up in Boston and lived in Boston his whole life. And I was standing in the, you know, the cemetery at his funeral and thinking about, you know, I, I go all these different places and I go all over the world and, you know, I'm on the road a lot with my band and, you know, I'm almost changing my identity or, or, or changing who I am year by year. And yet, it's probably this same exact cemetery someday that I'll, you know, be buried in. My shoes were sinking in that cold, wet grass As I looked into the grave priest was talking to the sky above about a soul that he had saved. The bell was ringing in that old churchyard when they laid him in the ground. You could hear it for a mile or more. You hear that dark and holy sound. So ring out for the empty lives that you made whole And sing out to the wandering ones for whom you told Someday when my time has come You'll ring to call my soul, call my soul to know me best But all the empty nights I've spent out there never seem to give me rest So ring out for the empty lives that you made whole And sing out to the wandering ones for whom you told Someday when my time has come you'll ring to call my soul Call my soul
churchyard You can lay me in the ground Ring the bell out loud to call me home Let me hear that holy sound So ring out for the empty lives that you made whole And sing out to the wandering ones for whom you told Someday when my time has come You'll ring to call my soul Ring out for the empty lives that you made whole And sing out to the wandering ones for whom you told Someday when my time has come You'll ring to call my soul Call my soul Because you travel a lot, but you actually honestly come home when you come home, right? Having grown up in the Boston area, yes, I I literally come back home to where I grew up, and uh, and that's an interesting feeling because I know every everyone else who's in the band has migrated to this city, and some of them have lived here for quite a long time now. Um, interesting to wonder where everyone will end up someday you know uh if people end up moving to different cities eventually but but for now boston is the place there's a couple other things that i really like about the album and one of them is the fact that you have included a couple covers on it including a really wonderful version of i think it's alan jackson's tune uh, ace of hearts yeah that song, Bronwyn, our fiddle player, brought to the group, and we were, you know, we're we're young and we we're trying to show off to the bluegrass world that we really like bluegrass and that we can play bluegrass. So we wanted to put something really fast on the album, but the problem is that everything practically has been recorded already by somebody. I mean. Between Ricky Staggs and Del McCurry, you know, and uh, Hot Rise or, or any any of these great bluegrass bands, if you think of a classic bluegrass standard, it's probably already been cut by somebody. So, you know, if you want to put How Mountain Girls Can Love or something on your bluegrass album, that's, that's great. But, you know, there may be nine or ten other versions of it that people have done. And we wanted to do a fast bluegrass song, but we wanted it to be something original. So Bronwyn brought this Alan Jackson, you know, kind of honky-tonk country song to the group, and she was like, you know, what if we sped the song up, right? So it has this honky-tonk sound, like, love the gamble every heart will take, you know? And we kept speed it up, but the vocals would get too jumbled, you know? Love the gamble, every heart. You know, it's like the, the words get too fast and too jumbled. And even when we sped it up, it still wasn't that fast. And then we were talking to our producer, Stephen Mosian, and he was listening, and he was like, what if instead of trying to speed the song up and speed the vocals up, you kept everything just how it is and double-timed the rhythm underneath? So instead of love the gamble every heart, it would become love the gamble every heart will take, you know, and you'd have that really fast. So we tried it, and then all of a sudden it was like as fast as any of us could play it. It was at, um, you know, like 170 beats per minute. And so that ended up serving two purposes, which is to have this really cool Alan Jackson cover, and we finally got our blazing fast bluegrass song to put on the record uh and that was a yeah the double time idea came from our producer loves a gamble every heart will take you roll the dice and hope it won't rain One night I bet on you 
your blue eyes and took a chance and I won a whole lot more than one night of romance I held the ace of hearts that night in the dark how lucky can one man be I hold the winning hand anyway life deals the cards no way to lose Cause I've got you My ace of hearts The other thing I really like uh, that's really necessary on every bluegrass album, and that is you have a couple of instrumentals. Right. Including one by B.B. Wickwire. So Wickwire is actually one of the songs that we've been doing the longest at this point. I think B.B. wrote that only maybe a few months after the band got together, and that's one of those tunes that we've been doing for long enough that it's gone through different arrangements and you know it's got this really kind of minor modal sound to it it's, it's aggressive it's pretty fast and uh you'll notice if you when you're playing the, the track that it actually starts out with banjo and mandolin playing in unison together and when david joined the band on the mandolin i think all of us were so excited to finally have this great mandolin player and bb was really excited about it, and we were, you know, we were like, okay, we have to rearrange our music because we have this mandolin player now. And BB was like, what if he just started playing the tune with me right at the beginning of the track? He just played the melody, and I think some of us were probably like, oh, you know, BB, you know, yeah, it's it's exciting that we have a mandolin player, but you know, it doesn't mean we have to have him play ev- everything. But then we tried it, and having her and the banjo and the mandolin playing in you know total unison and it sounded awesome so that ended up being this really cool part of the track is that they start this tune off together but yeah i i love that tune and that's uh i think probably the reason we've been playing it for so long is because it's such a good tune
we have an album, and that is Onwards, which yep. is available at all the sources, probably? It's, I think it's available just about everywhere that you can get music nowadays, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, um, I'm... I'm ancient enough to think that where you get music is a record store, but uh, right. <laughs> but that um, isn't yeah. the case anymore. Right. <laughs> in addition to that, for us here in Savannah, you'll be here uh, next Wednesday, November 15th at the Trinity yep. United Methodist Church on Telfair Square as part of the Trinity Sanctuary Series and yes. uh, performing along with the local bluegrass band, City Hotel. Indeed. We've been talking to Evan Murphy, and I want to thank you so very much for having this chance to chat with me, and I want to thank you so very much for coming back to our area uh, to play as uh, part of Mile 12. Yeah, thanks for having me. It's really been a pleasure, and we're so excited to come back.